there's always the future, there's always dreams, and there's always second chances. You just have to take a leap of faith to go after them. Hi, I'm Jenna. I'm Dan. Nice party. A recently widowed man and a recently divorced woman meet up. He's just lost his wife, and the last thing he's thinking about is any more relationships in his life. And in her case, she's actually been looking. I'm looking for someone to fall madly in love with. Someone who fall just as madly in love with me. And so they meet, and something seems to be clicking, whether they acknowledge it or not. They don't fall in love instantly, but you see their first meeting and how they interact together. So things were moving slower, you know, they don't just jump into bed with each other, you know. The timing is unfortunate, it's so premature, opportunity never knocks on cue. There's no way to take a leap when you're really quite sure that the journey's not the right one for you. I never had aspired to writing a musical. I had been writing individual songs, but I was stuck in my songwriting. And a composer who I revere saw my writer's block and said, I've got just a solution. Why don't you write a musical? You can write about the first year of your relationship with Mary Jo, now my wife. And he said, no shortage of topics there. Stephen Seinheim said, write what you know. I just couldn't write that way. I found that I was lying and cheating and sanitizing things. So then someone gave me the idea of just creating two fictional characters and then basing their story on my experiences. And once I did that, I was so liberated I could write almost anything. And that was the beginning. But we didn't know at the time that was going to lead um, to a show. Please sit here right beside me while I sing us a gentle lullaby. And soon after that, Diane and Brian and I and Joe, who's been supervising everything, we talked about what's missing from the story. And at that moment, there was only four songs. And I said, well, let's see what happens when these two people go on a date. Where shall they go? And Ted said, well, let's send them to a museum. It's unthreatening. Here's my favorite, this Rothko multiform. Those deep, deep reds make my body turn warm. We're supposed to stand close to get an intimate view and absorb the sensuality that's in there too. If you ask Ted, is the show autobiographical, Ted will say, absolutely not. And if you ask me, is the show autobiographical, I'll say, there's a lot of it that's autobiographical. You know, I love all these old townhouses. They remind me of my neighborhood in Brooklyn. It is literally true that Mary Jo had never been to Brooklyn at the time I met her. Ooh, Brooklyn! <laughs> and she was not particularly enthusiastic about going there. I've never actually been to Brooklyn. <laughs> it's always seemed so foreign. I felt very exposed that it was my life on stage. I don't think either of us were trying to do Mary Jo and Ted Shen, but of course we have them in our minds because they're close friends of ours. There was definitely an investment in how we were being portrayed. Ted had a very particular story he wanted and I think needed to tell. The center of it is about what it is to bravely step forwards into a new kind of life, and particularly from a place of grief where maybe you think that's impossible after losing somebody you've been with so long. It's complex. You will always be a part of me. I will always be a part of you. That's another law. People will say musicals are never done. It's just that the curtain has to go up at some point. Soon after that, we made a little concert. There was at Joe's Pub that had about nine songs attached to it. And then we were invited to the Signature Theatre in Arlington, in DC. And 
we had our first production down there. I was stunned when Oscar Eustace said, I'd like to do it, if you would have us do it. Oscar knew the show well because he advised me as a dramaturg in my early writing of the show. And yes, it was rewritten many, many, many times. We knew how it needed to change, how it needed to grow, how it needed to develop. We only actually had one song since that production, but it really fundamentally changed in the storytelling. That magnetic force, the chemical reaction, they bind us together with inseparable attraction. How to explain them, I haven't got a clue. The story is just really very personal. We're all sort of voyeuristically participating in this love affair. It's Ted's story in many ways, but actually what we've discovered is many people share the same story. Many, many people are moved by the simplicity of actually what it is to reimagine yourself from a place of grief. Just look at her. Please, look at her. Warmth in your eyes. Perfect. Tender but wise. Perfect. So many women who saw the show knew right away that her conflict was she was afraid to commit. You do deserve someone to help you be who you want to be, someone to love you and care for you always. Come let that someone be me. Finally, they both come to realize nothing's perfect. And that if they are able to leave with the wounds that they both have behind, they have a chance to do something together. You wore my hands back up when my world turned cold. You gave me all of the dreams I could ever hold. A second chance to live an unexpected prize. I am just in such a state of gratitude for all the people I'm surrounded with. First, the people who have been part of this team from the beginning, and then the people whom we've been so lucky to join forces with, to be given this unbelievable honor and opportunity to present the show at the Public Theater is beyond fantasy, and it's a treasure. And ultimately, of course, I dedicate the show to Mary Jo. It's a beautiful love story. I feel really blessed. Oh! <laughs>